What's up everybody? This is Mitch from BoardCo. Today I'm going to be breaking down high-end surf style boards and what you can look at if you are shopping. Hey everybody, this is Mitch at BoardCo. I am gonna be breaking down some high-end surf style boards here with a number of boards I've got here in front of me. And the purpose of this video is really to just give you some basic things to look at if you are shopping for a surf style board, if you're looking on BoardCo.com or if you're checking out some stuff somewhere else, how you can differentiate between different boards just by looking at things like the pictures that are there on the website. Now, there's a lot of different factors about boards that are difficult to see by looking at pictures online, things such as the rocker, things such as like the fin camp and bevels on the rails, different things like that. But I want to talk about just some basics with the perimeter outline of the boards and generally speaking what they can do. Now, every single board is different because there's different thicknesses, different rail shapes, things like that. But the perimeter of the board is going to be arguably the most important factor or the biggest differentiator between the different boards you're gonna look at. So I've got three different boards here in front of me and the reason why I picked these three different boards is because they each, uh, they have some different characteristics to them that are gonna be really easy for us to identify the differences between the boards. So right here, I've got a Soulcraft Secret Weapon, I have a Phase Five Doctor, and I have a Hyperlite Varial Accelerator. Now, each one of these boards is considered high-end surf style boards, meaning that you could show up to a wake surfing competition with any one of these three boards. Nobody's gonna be laughing or making fun of you. They're gonna be thinking you're on something that's pretty great. And so I'm gonna tell you that, but they have very different characteristics and they're going to ride very differently from one another. Now, each of the one of these is a high-end surf style board. And so I'm gonna back up and explain that really quickly. And then I'm gonna get into the details about each one of these boards in particular. Now, high-end surf style boards are boards that are designed to have a surf feel when they are out on the wave. Surf feel meaning that it's going to drive power from the fins of the board and that those fins are going to allow the board to be controlled and maneuvered. Generally speaking, the fins are bigger, deeper fins, kind of like the ones you see here on the Space 5 Doctor. They have um, at least two fins typically, so this one's got four. It's got two small little nubs and two bigger fins on the sides, and they're going to generate drive and power for the board so that, it can be, so that you can pull carve maneuvers, you can uh, do bottom turns, you can do a lot of slashing and cutting on the wave. You can also come up and air off the top of the wave using the power of the fins to drive the board up and off the top of the lip of your surf wave. So those are just some of the characteristics of a surf style board. The other style is a skim style board that has um, one to multiple fins that are typically a lot smaller and they're designed for more slidey skatey maneuvers. So with the different surf style boards, there's a few things that I wanna point out as far as the differences between them. I'm gonna start off with what is probably the most important factor when you're looking at a board. It's not the only factor, but it's probably the most important one that is going to change the way the board rides. And that is the tail end of the board and the tail shape. Okay, so I'm gonna take the boards right here and I'm flipping them over so you can see the bottom profile. And I'm gonna show you the tail end of the board and the tail is going to be the most, is arguably the most important factor when you're looking at surf style boards as far as the shape of the board. The reason why is the tail is always in contact with the water where the nose and the other parts of the board are not necessarily always in direct contact with the water but the tail is going to control the way the water flows off the back end of the board. And that's really the differences between them is in what way does the water flow off of the back end. So probably the most simple one of the three that I'm gonna show you right here is the Phase 5 Doctor. Now I picked this board because it's got a really squared off tail. It's not a true square, so it does just come and have a straight 90 degree edge, but it's pretty squared off. It's, it's relatively flat here. It's got a little bit of a, 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 a um, a fang tail shape right here, but you've also got, but it has more of a boxed out feel. Now what I mean by boxed out is that means the perimeter edge of the board is going to continue in a relatively straight path. It's not going to tuck or slide way in as it approaches the tail end of the board. Then the board is going to take a relatively sharp curve and it's going to be relatively flat here on the back end. Now this is going to do a few things for you. The most important thing that it's going to do is it's going to add additional volume. The more squared the tail shape is, 
the more volume you have on the tail, which means that the board is generally speaking going to be faster and is going to be able to support a heavier rider weight. And so if you have a bigger, if you're a bigger guy, the doctor or, or another board that is similar to this is going to be a really good board for allowing you to stay on the surf wave. Same type of thing if you have a smaller wave shape, and especially the combination of a bigger guy on a smaller wave, you're gonna need more volume here in the tail. Now there's two parts to volume. There's the, the shape of the board, and then there's the actual thickness of the board. The doctor's a relatively thick board with decent volume. But uh, this is something that's really hard to see from just looking at the perimeter of the board, where the side is something that you can really get a good idea of. The thicker and the more, the more volume and the more surface area that is here at the back end, the more lift the back end of the board is gonna have. So it's gonna ride higher in the water and be a better board for either a heavier rider or on a smaller surf wave. So that's one right there is um, what you have there. Oh, sorry. The other, the downside of having a board that's got a um, wider, more squared off tail shape is it's not going to be quite as maneuverable. You're gonna, when you go through and try and cut and slide from, go um, roll from edge to edge, this squared off tail shape is not going to roll and slide as easily through the water. It's not gonna be as maneuverable and nimble as if you have a more tucked in tail shape. Okay, so talking, we talked about the board that's got the straight 90 degree shape. Now I'm gonna jump over to this board right here, the Soulcraft Secret Weapon. Now this board has what is called a fang tail shape, meaning that it's got a, it looks kinda of like fang, like Dracula fangs with, with uh, teeth here. And the reason why is the point of this shape is it carries the same edge perimeter similar to what the doctor does to where it's going to come up and not it's not a full boxed out tail but it it doesn't tuck in nearly as far as if you've got a major step down rail here so it carries the perimeter here at the edge which means it's going to carry some speed and um and it's going to hold an edge line really well the other thing though is that instead of it just coming and boxing off right here it goes and has this thing that dips down in this is gonna change the way the water flows off the back end of the board and it's gonna make it more nimble and maneuverable than what you have on a, on a box tail or, or a straight 90 type tail shape like we saw in the doctor. Now, it's gonna be more nimble, it's gonna be more maneuverable, but on the other side of it, it's also not going to have quite as much volume, which means it's gonna have less uh, speed because of the reduction in surface area. So, more nimble, less surface area, less volume. The last one is the accelerator. And this has got a step down rail with a bat wing. And so what that means is that it goes in kind of steps, steps. It's got a bat wing here, but you see that the tail edge, it goes from being way out here to by the time that it gets to the very tail, it's got a big curve that comes down here on the side. Now, because of this, uh, on the accelerator in particular, if they make up for it with a little more volume, it's a little thicker, so you don't end up losing all of that volume in the tail, but you have reduction in surface area. What this is gonna do is a combination of a couple of things. It's going to be more maneuverable, but it's also going to have less total surface area. Now, surface area is great for speed, it's also great for airing. And so this board, the accelerator, it's, tip, it's not gonna be as easy to pop air off the top of the wave as something like the doctor is but the accelerator is also gonna be a lot more nimble and maneuverable. So really the thing you're looking at is just how, how it carries this rail shape a lot from the side of the board up through the tail. The more it carries through, the more box that is, the more surface area and the more buoyant that the board is gonna be at the back end, the more speed it's gonna carry and the easier it's gonna to be to stay on the wave. The more tucked in it is, the more maneuverable and uh, quick the board is gonna do rail to rail edge changes when you're going from side to side. So that's talking about tail shapes. I hope that makes sense and it's helpful. Um, especially if you jump on a few of these different boards, you'll really understand what we're talking about. Now, the next thing to talk about is the nose shape. Now we can talk about the belly of the board, but they're all fairly similar uh, as far as the belly goes. There's a lot of difference as far as the total width, but that's something that's really hard to tell from just looking at a picture on uh, where the other thing that is a lot easier to look at is the nose of the board. And the nose of the board is gonna act almost exactly like the tail that we described. So once again, you've got the doctor right here. You've got the belly of the board that extends and it comes up here and it's got a diamond tip on the front. And this has got a big wide platform on the front of the board. So the rail is gonna stay relatively straight up and down. If it came straight up, it would come to here and then taper in. 
but it's pretty boxed out. It's, it's a really wide tip. Now what this is gonna do for you is the same thing it did on the, the tail of the board. It's gonna add more surface area, more volume in the nose, and it's going to make it so that it, when you lean forward on the board, there's gonna be a lot more surface area to be there to, to generate speed. So if you're, once again, a bigger guy right, or riding a smaller wave, jumping on a board like this is gonna make it easier to stay in the wave because as you lean on your front foot, which is your gas pedal while you're surfing, it's not going to sink down the water, it's just going to be able it's gonna be uh, basically a big gas pedal on the front that's gonna shoot you back into the wave. The downside is that you have this, ed this perimeter that comes up like this. It, if you follow the same path line, this board is gonna maneuver and ride the same as a board that is, if you follow the same edge path, coming like this, going up to here, if the board was not cut off here on the top. If it was a continuous, arc coming all the way to the top to the tip, it'd be a really tall wide board. Tall wide boards are not as maneuverable as shorter boards are. And if you have that same edge profile, it, it is better when they cut it off here on the top, but it's going to ride somewhat similar to a longer board because it's got this big box out nose. So if you're going to want to roll it on edge and, and do a, a quick little maneuver of, uh, of cutting and edge changing on your heels and then switching back over your toes. So if you wanted to do a really quick zigzag or a big smooth bottom turn or something like that, having this extra width of the nose is gonna get in your way a little bit, but it's also gonna give you more speed. So you gotta think about those two things, about the wave you're riding on and what kind of style you want when you're looking at it. Next thing, once again, you go to the secret weapon. It's got a rounded nose shape. So it's not a full like pointed, to, uh, super tight point tip, but it's got a little bit, it's got a bit of volume in the front, but it definitely tapers in much, much more than the docker does. If you take this edge line straight out, you see it would come out to here if it were to just do a straight 90. So it's got a lot less volume up in the tip, but it's still got a little bit that's up here rounded. Um, because it's got, le um, it's still a little bit rounded in the tip, it's not a super thick nose on the front of this board on the, on the Seaver Weapon. So, this board is going to be a lot more nimble than the Doctor, but on the other side, it's also not going to have, if you lean on the front of the board, you're more likely to sink it down a little bit. You're not going to get as much speed out of it when you lean forward. Okay, next I'm going to show you the accelerator, which has the most aggressive point on the tip of the three boards. So you see it's got a, no, a rail line that tucks in really tight here on the front. If we take it straight out the side and go to 90, it's got a big gap right here that's not filling in. Once again, not gonna have as much speed on the front of the board when you lean into, into it, but it's going to be really quick edge to edge change. It's going to rock the nose in and make it so if you wanna take a quick dash at the wave and slash on the top, it's gonna be able to rip it right around really quick. Same type of thing if you're gonna spin 360s on the water or other different things you're doing. So really when you're looking at both the tail shape and the nose shape of the boards, you're following the perimeter edge rail and that's gonna be the path that the board is wanting to go. Based on these things that I've talked about, you should be able to identify with each one of these boards how they're going to ride without ever jumping, in them, or jumping on them in the water. Look at the Doctor. It's got straighter rail lines that go from the tip all the way to the tail of the board. The board's gonna to wanna to go straight. It's going to be a great, but it's gonna be a, a somewhat maneuverable board, but it's not going to really have quick edge to edge changes, and it's not gonna be the best board for performing spins. However, because of the additional volume from the straight rails and the additional surface area, you're gonna have a board that's gonna be a great board for bigger guys, for smaller waves, for having speed to stay on your surf wave and be able to, and be able to keep up with the wave while you're going. The secret weapon is going to be a, a step in between and the accelerator is going to be on the complete other end of the spectrum. It's going to be really quick rail to rail changes. It's gonna be super nimble and maneuverable in the water, but it's not, it's, uh, not going to be able to, to lock in and just go straight on if you're a bigger guy riding on a smaller wave as something compared to like the doctor. So if you want a really aggressive board rail to rail, the accelerator is going to be great, the doctor not so much, and the secret weapon is going to be somewhere kind of in the middle. So when you're looking at these different things, I hope that this has been a really quick breakdown characteristic of the shape outline perimeter of boards that may help you when you're looking at there's obviously a lot of other characteristics, such as the bevel shape on the side and the rail shape on the side of the board, the th overall thickness and volume, the rocker line, different things like that. 
but you can probably eliminate a few boards right off the top of the list based on how you want a board to perform. If you're a really big guy riding on a smaller wave, you can pretty much eliminate the accelerator right out of the gates just because it doesn't have a lot of surface area. Or you may go, hey, we need to jump to a bigger size. Same thing if you're a lighter rider riding on a big wave that wants a really aggressive ride. The Doctor is a great board, but probably not a good fit for what you're looking for. So hopefully this has been helpful and gives you a point in the right direction. Check out the other videos that we have on YouTube and you can get a breakdown on all the different characteristics of surfboards. We really get in the nitty gritty of things. Check out all of the boards that we carry on boardco.com and don't hesitate to reach out to us or any of our gear experts if you're wanting to check out the right board for you. Our guys really know their stuff and are more than happy to help out. We appreciate it a ton. Thanks a lot and we'll talk to you later.